Today I'm going to show you an example of uh, what I think of as contrapuntal thinking. And I'm not going to pick an example from a Bach fugue or a Renaissance motet. That would be altogether too obvious. I'm going to look at a repertoire that's a little less known for uh, contrapuntal thinking. This is Haydn's symphonies. Now, I know you might say, well, we know that in development sections, Haydn often has a little fugato, and that's true. So I'm not going to look there either. I'm going to look at the first theme group of the finale of uh, Haydn's 99th Symphony. And I'm going to look very closely at some very small bits. So for instance, the theme of this uh, symphony starts out with a two-bar basic idea. And then it goes on, there's a contrasting idea, the basic idea comes back, there's a modulation to the dominant, then that whole section repeats, then there's a return to the tonic. And what we're going to look at is the accompaniment to that first theme. So it's this. So the first violin plays the melody, and the second violin plays 5-4-3. 4, 3, 2. So you can hear that the first bar is sort of tonic harmony, the second is sort of dominant harmony. The viola uh, plays 3, 2, 1, and 2, 1, 7. So when you put it together, it sounds like this. And then the, you hear this again, and then you hear some different stuff. And then when it comes back, Haydn plays the two-bar basic idea twice in a row, which is a little unusual. Why does he do that? Well, one thing is he plays it in the cellos first and then in the viola. So the cello has it down here. So, Evan, you want to sing that? Just go. Yeah. La 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 la. And then the viola has it. La 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 la. And what happens in the upper uh, instruments when they play the tune in the low register? Well, on, over Evan's statement, which is he's the cellist, uh, you hear this, which you recognize as the accompaniment from the second violin and viola, but now it's moved up and Evan's singing the tune on the bottom. And let's do that together. So there's also a little upbeat that the violins have to their accompaniment figure. So it goes one and two. La, 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 la. When the bass has the principal melody and the upper strings have the accompaniment, that means we've reversed the positions. So that's a kind of contrapuntal thinking right there, because we have invertible counterpoint at the octave. But then when the viola plays the tune, Haydn takes the accompaniment lines in thirds and put, turns them upside down so they become parallel sixths. And that's what goes on. And now Charlotte will sing the viola line. La, 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 la. So you can say, oh, look, there again, he's reversed the position of the two accompanimental lines over the low melody line. That still doesn't answer the question, why did he repeat it twice in a row? And the answer is that when you play the accompaniment line, First, starting with 5-4-3, and then starting with 3, which was originally the viola line, you get this amazing, long, sequential, beautifully continuous, stepwise melody. This is the longest tune you've had yet in this piece. And it means that you are suddenly, instead of taking 5, 4, 3 over 3, 2, 1, or under 3, 2, 1, you're putting 5, 4, 3, 4, 3, 2 before 3, 2, 1. 
And this is really what contrapuntal thinking is about, is moving the tune above, below, after, before, now you see it, now you don't. So this is really the purpose. And this long, lovely tune is made all the more striking by the fact that the little three-note pickup that was before Evan sang, remember that? The oboe, which has not played until now, participates in that little three-note pickup, and then it just sustains the high B flat, and the melody, this new long melody, peels off from the high B flat. And in order to illustrate that with just a piano, I'm going to ask Charlotte to sing the high B flat uh, while I play the accompanimental lines now on top. So that's really an amazing moment, and suddenly you feel that the piece is taking off. So you've had this nice, well-behaved music, but buried in this well-behaved music was a little cell that could be made into something longer and more ongoing, and now the piece is picking up momentum as it moves towards the second theme. So that's what contrapuntal thinking is about. It's moving things before, after, above, below, little melodic fragments that seem too innocent, really, to care about, and yet they have a huge effect. Thanks. Thank you.